Hey everyone, this is Joe with Sign Tracker. Welcome to today's webinar. In today's webinar, we're going to talk about workflow in Sign Tracker. So basically, it might be a little different than something you've been used to in the past. So anytime you have an opportunity to work on a job, whether it's a small job, a couple of stickers, all the way up to a big job like a pylon sign or an apartment complex. So basically, if a customer um, gives you the opportunity to quote on something, what you do is you go under the Jobs tab and you just go New Job. And then what that'll do is when you fill out the information, so it's whether it's job name, description, and that can be as long as you want it to be. Um, if the customer is already in Sign Tracker, you can just search. It'll automatically fill in all their information. If it's a new customer, you can add a new company and a new, and then additionally add new contacts from here. So what that does is when you set up this job, it's going to tag this job to the history of this company and then you can add people so it'll separately tag the person at the company so if you work with like architects for example or design firms and there's multiple people at that one place then it'll keep track of who you did what job with um, and then you can choose whether it's a product or a service job and it shows up on the calendar a little different if you if you are a small shop and you're the project manager and the salesperson you can just select yourself but if you know who's going to be doing what you can do that if there is a due date at this point, you can assign it a due date, and then you can also have the location, whether you're going to deliver it or go out in the field and actually install it, or if the customer is going to pick it up, you could just write pickup, and then you save it. I'm going to cancel this because I don't want to torture you and have you watch me type very slowly. Um, so what's going to happen is that job is going to show up in the very first spot on your job flow column, um, and then from there you can start moving it through the uh, system. So. That might be a little different. I know some shops I've talked to say, well, we don't even count it as a job until it's actually sold. So that's why on the job flow board, your first column, you can name it whatever you want. I think when you open up Sign Tracker for the first time, it's new job, um, and then it's pre-production, production, install, delivery, and uh, closeout. So if you want to change your first column name to opportunity, uh, that's a great way to go, and then your job will just show up there and then you can kind of move it through your system. And each of these job flow columns actually represents a stage of production. So some sign shops I've seen, um, they've actually had their columns labeled by a router or a printer, and that's fine too. So once, um, once the job is sold, then at this point you can put it uh, ready for next stage. And so whoever is doing the next thing to it will see that and can move it over. Um, and then you can also, from the job flow board, assign due dates, and you can kind of see what's going on task-wise, how many tasks are completed, who's responsible for the job, when it was created. And at any time, you can just click the title of the job, and it's going to open the job up for you, where you do all your tasks, notes, um, attach your files, create uh, quoting worksheets and customer contracts. There's also forms and signed templates. So but let's go back to our job flow board. I want to talk about it just for a few more minutes. The job flow board is really intended for you to prioritize your work. So you can you have to decide what's important to you. Some sign shops really like first in, first out, and that's fine. You can sort it by the due date. Um, the other way to do it is just to look at your priorities. So if this, say this ABC Bank, for example, um, it's a, a priority customer. They're great. They use you guys all the time, and you want to slide it up in the front of the line on the design column because you they're important to you <laughs> and that's fine you know um, and then in some cases in production you know you might have uh, these two jobs that are you know running behind and they're super small and you know that this um, this job right here is going to tie up the printer for a few days so yeah you just slide these up and keep them in the front of the line get them done get them knocked out get your customer um, the, the the signs that they need and get paid so so the idea with the job flow board is you set these columns up any way that you want your workflow to go. You can add a new column simply by just insert column after. I'll just do one really quick just to show you. We'll do a test one. And then it's going to drop it in. Um, it's going to drop it in after the column that you set up. And then you can just double click it um, if you want to change the name. And then, of course, we'll just delete this one. And so it'll keep count also how many jobs that you have in the column. 
Um, so you have 15 jobs in the pending approval column. So that's an opportunity to you know call customers and figure out what's going on. But the goal is to get your job all the way down to close out. And at close out, the only thing that should be done, maybe or not be done rather, is maybe just the final payment from the client. So the goal is to get them to close out, have them be happy, and you're just waiting for your final payout. And at, and at our shop, you know, we would just um, we would put the jobs on hold. You can see you can put a job on hold by just simply clicking this, put it on hold, um, and then you can say why it's on hold. So let's say you know invoice sent on three five final invoice. So now it's on hold. So when we would have our production meetings, the only person that was really able to move a job from closeout into archive was um, the accountant. So and then you can unblock it from here. In the archive column, it's going to show you the last 10 jobs that you did. But if you go to the work in progress view or the list view, um, then you can access your archives from there. So a couple more things about the job flow board is you have this little gear icon here. And you can choose if, what you want to show up on your job cards. So whether it's sales rep, project manager, tasks, created date, show full description. And what full description is, is this here. Um, you can it, you, it'll show the top five lines, and if if you don't have the full description checked off, it'll just show the top five lines. And after that, um, you just have to click and open it up, and then you can add as much stuff as you want. So some sign shops really like to have full descriptions. It's fine; it makes the job cards really long. But you know, if if you want to be able to see all the details, you know, at a glance, that's that's absolutely fine. You can also collapse them too, so you have a tighter view. And each of these columns can be sorted out. So for example. You know, if I have the opportunity column, I don't really want to see that. I don't deal with that. I don't want to deal with the archive. I don't want to deal with closeout. So you can kind of set up how you want to view the job flow board. Um, and the only thing is if you empty your, I'll just say this because we get calls all the time. Why did my job flow board reset? If you empty your cache on your browser on the job flow board, you will have to come back and reset what you want to see, which takes all of about two seconds. So. And there's a universal search here too, so you can search, you know, job numbers, job names, client names. Um, you can also filter it out by employee if you only want to see the jobs that you're associated with. So, and you can create a new job from here as well. So that's the job flow board, and you know, the thing that we, some shops love to have this on a big screen, and I get it. It's a great visual for looking at everything that has to be done. Um, at my shop, we used it primarily for, uh, we use it for our. Um, our project management meetings, so our production meetings. And so we would have a production meeting after lunch on Monday. It just, just worked great for us. And we would literally go through every single job card. What's holding it up? Why didn't we get this logo? Why do we need to, you know, what's, what are we, why are we still waiting on material quotes or whatever? And so we would pretty much go through every job card to make sure that everything was moving along the way it was supposed to be. And, uh, and, then, and then, you know, would mark it, would make notes and all that stuff. And then would have our second production meeting on Thursdays in the morning. And then that would just be more of a kind of a stand-up meeting. We'd just make sure nothing was getting clogged up. And, and, um, and then would, would, that was it. They would give us the rest of the week to finish up. So, so that's one view of your jobs. Um, I love the job list view. So I, when I came to work in the morning, I would open up this job list view. And what I liked about it is that you could easily search out. So let's say if I knew I need to work on, usually I had to work on a ton of jobs every single day because they all move so fast. But uh, you know, if I would just search out, okay, here's the two jobs I know I need to work on. I need to get these done. Um, and so I would just hold down. I'm on a Mac, so my command key, if you're on a PC, I think it's the control key. And I would just click and it would open up a new window and then I would do everything I needed to do inside my job. So this, this is the same thing as the job card on the job flow board. It's just, I like to call this my electronic job folder. So, but the job list view is great. Uh, it's a quick way to get to job from job to job. Um, and you know, it, it, all these columns can be sorted out. So if I was a salesperson and I wanted to sort out the four or five jobs I have in opportunity stage, you know, I'm waiting for the client to say, yeah, go ahead and give us an official quote on this. And if for some reason you don't get it, even from here, it's easy. You just move it right to archived. Um, you can also change due dates from here. And all of these columns are sortable too. So, um, so let's go into our job um, folder for a second, just so you know what you can do in here. Obviously here you can also change from stage to stage. You can also change the due dates. You can print the details if you want. You have um, an activity tracker. So every time a job is moved from stage to stage, this is an old job in my demo account. So it's gonna have a lot more activity than you would probably see on yours. But 
if I put a job on hold, if I un, if I take it off hold, if I move it from a, a different stage or whatever, it's going to track the activity and who did it. So anybody that might move a job with within uh, Sign Tracker, anybody can move a job. So if it does move, you'll see who did it. Um, tasks. So tasks are template driven. So for example, you know you and you can watch some videos on how to set these up, but it's in this it's in the settings tab. So if you're here, just go to setup settings. And you have your task templates here and they're really easy to set up just new task template and just fill in the list and if and if you need a list some sample lists of tasks for different job types shoot me an email joe at sign-tracker.com and uh and i'll i'll shoot you an excel spreadsheet with some task list samples so anyway you can have simple task lists so if you do a lot of small banner jobs the task list can just be simply this and you can, uh, you know, you can delete these. You don't have to have them. It's not going to hurt the template. So the reason why I'm deleting those because I want to show you you can have pretty extensive task lists too. So if you're a sign shop that does like a lot of electric signs, for example, you might have the initial design meeting with the client, and this can be assigned to you know whoever does that, and you assign it, and then you can have a separate due date on this that's separate from the due date of the project, and then you can even write you know notes on this. You know, hey, see Joe. So, the, so tasks, you know, and, and again, if this task doesn't apply to this one, you can, you know, get rid of it. It's not going to hurt the template. You can slide these around. You can add additional tasks to this list and then just slide that around and it's never going to hurt the template. Um, the one thing about tasks that's great is that was the second thing, you know, from, from my job list view, I would have that open all day and I would also have my job task view. So again, you know, command key for a Mac. And I would have this tab open and I could come in here and I could see every single task that I had on every single job. And you can filter these out by, so if you're a person that oversees everyone, for example, you can filter these out by employee or see all employees. Um, you can see the tasks that are just due today. So if you're really using this, which we did, uh, every day I would always have a giant list of tasks that I had to do. You can see which ones um, are due this week, next week. You can see which ones have any status or ready that are in progress and even done. So. Um, you can also filter your jobs, uh, your tasks out by job. So, if you're, um, you know, if you're overseeing again all the projects, or, or, um, <clears throat> you know, you're you're making sure that everyone's kind of staying on task. You can get, you can literally see every single open task on every single job. And just so you know, you know, when you assign due dates to these, you can, um, they'll, it'll show up on the individual's calendar. It'll show up on the dashboard. So. Um, in any case, it, it just depends on how you like to view them. I personally loved having the list view and the task view open. It just it seemed to make things much easier for me. So um, anyway, let's go back to our job. Uh, you can also create notes on jobs. So one thing that I did a lot of is I I, um, I used Gmail. So some of my project emails back and forth with customers, those, those uh, threads would get really long. And so what I always made sure I did is anytime a customer would approve a change or a color change or an additional fee, I would always just copy and paste that and put the whole email into the notes and it would timestamp it and I always had that. So attachments, you can attach um, any, any files you want to. So whether it's production files or survey photos, and once you have them uploaded, you can click on them, you can change the names of them if you have a different naming you know, system. Uh, also, if you go out into the field and you're doing a survey on, a, say, a, a box truck or a storefront or whatever, you can take all your pictures, you can write notes, and you can just you can open up your app on your phone um, through your browser. So you, if you, you have to open up in Chrome on your browser or Safari or whatever you use, but then you can navigate to this job and you can click here and with your thumb and it'll navigate to your camera and then you know just select the photos upload them and if you have I'm kind of old school so I would take a clipboard and I'd write a bunch of notes and there's a whole lot of survey forms you can see them in the form section um, but I would print up my survey forms I take a picture of those too and I just upload them and I just never worried about you know my photos being disorganized if I was going out to do several surveys or um, losing my notes so um, Quoting and contracts we're not going to cover in this video, but there is an extensive one that you can watch. You can watch the full length 
Um, you can watch the full-length webinar on everything in Sign Tracker, uh, and you can also uh, go to the uh, our playlist on our YouTube channel, and it kind of breaks down everything as far as setting up quotes and contracts and how all that works. So, and then again, forms. You know, there's a ton of forms in here. I would just recommend opening them up. Everything from change orders for clients, uh, warranty um, slips, and you know, landlord approval requests if you have to do that all kinds of survey sheets, um, subcontractor agreements, work orders. So I just encourage you to you know, take a look at those. And then sign templates, same thing. There's a lot of sign templates in here um, for all different sign types. And if, you're, if your shop really needs um, even more of these, um, most we have another little product. It's separate from Sign Tracker, but it's called the Sign Shop Starter Kit. And you can find the link to that on our website at sign-tracker.com. But um, it's really good. It's very reasonable, and there are thousands of sign templates and sign designs and f all kinds of forms that aren't necessarily in Sign Tracker, and really, really helpful. And that's um, signshopstarterkit.com, longest URL in history, signshopstarterkit.com. But go check that out, too. Uh, it's a one-time purchase. It's not connected to Sign Tracker, but it's uh, super helpful stuff. So anyway, that is um, – that's – sign tracker workflow um, summary I guess you want to say so I would say you know get in if you're new to sign tracker just really I mean as soon as you get into your account the first thing you want to do is just go new job and just start tracking your jobs and even if it takes a while to get the quoting set up and some of the task lists set set up they're they're both of those are pretty easy there's webinars you can watch and videos you can watch but in the meantime start tracking your jobs Anyway, thanks for spending a little bit of time with me today. I appreciate you guys, and we'll see you on the next webinar. And make sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel, where we'll be posting updated videos on a regular basis. And if you have any questions or suggestions, we'd love to hear from you through our chat tool found in the app. Thanks again. Have a great day.